Okay, so finally Harlequin Halls, we're finally doing a, a War Machine Battle Report. We're currently doing the Journeyman League, we are in week three. Correct. And we have, uh, week three of the Journeyman League is 25 points and you get, you have to use uh, the contents of the battle box. And outside of that, um, you can choose what you like. Uh, I'm running Cricks, Ross is running Circle, we're playing Killbox today. Ross, why don't you tell us about your deployment and why it is you've got the shit that you do today. Because it's how I fucking deploy every time. <laughs> um, yeah, no, there's a nice forest off to the left. Uh, my stalker's able to make good use of that with his ability to walk and prowl. Uh, what prowl does is, if you're in the effect of concealment uh, or a cloud effect, uh, you'll gain stealth. Um, even though it doesn't have any ranged attacks, in fact, none besides the Dark Note, it's nice to be stealth for his spells. Just make him work a little bit harder to put them on me. And Clever. yeah, feral up the mid. Um, yeah, I'm pretty restricted by the battle box, but see how it goes. Should be good. Um, I'm running six Bane Thralls and Tartarus and a War Witch Siren in addition to the battle box. Um, yeah, everything just kind of rape faces, running up with the arc nodes and just getting as much shit off as possible to make Denny a super awesome caster. Um, and then the Bane Thralls just kind of run in and rape face with Tartarus making more and making life generally hell for everybody else, particularly Hordes players. So we'll... Uh, yeah, I've got first turn. Ross has obviously got second then. Um, duh. <laughs> we'll uh, get back to you after turn one. We'll do a turn by turn basis kind of thing so that um, you guys can see what's going on. So hopefully this first battle report is goes all right. We're also in a different location so we don't have the roaring motherfuckers in the background so you can hear what we're saying. Utter scum. Utter scum. Turn one, movement. Um, all the Crick stuff just moved right up. Um, all the Warjacks ran. Uh, pretty stand well, Everything ran, basically. Um, Denny's camping for focus, and there wasn't really much else I could do. She got inside the kill box, which was awesome. <laughs> Yay, success! <laughs> Says the Crick's player. <laughs> um, and Ross's circle. What's the plan here? He's looking like um, he's trying to sweep a flank. I've totally relocated because I'm an idiot. Didn't really look at this deployment when I was doing mine, so... Yeah, I'm a bit worried about the arc nodes. Not so much the pain thralls. See what happens. Everything's run over to the side. Um, he's dropped. What have you got? You got prowl on both. Yeah, I, have, uh... I have stealth on my what with stalker. Yep. Um, I don't have stealth on the feral. I'm yep. Right, I'm alright with that. Uh, yeah, that's it. You know, just not, not much to do on first time. And she's just inside the kill box as well. So. Well, it doesn't matter until the end of my next turn. Yep. So. Keller, Keller, Keller. All right, beginning of Crick's Tricks on turn two. <laughs> Everything kind of swept around to try and counter his movement, which I'm sure I won't be able to do. Um, the Bane Thralls moved up and two of them moved to engage the Argus, um, just so that it doesn't get around and start causing any problems. Not that I think it really will, and not that I think Ross is hinging any sort of super special plan on it. <laughs> um, the Arc Nodes moved up and I dropped Crippling Grasp on the Warp Wolf, on the Feral Warp Wolf. And I managed to venom his pure blood uh, for shenanigans, Stalker. Um, and he's got a stone on one health with corrosion on it, so we'll see what happens. And yeah, everything else just kind of moved up. So yes. Okay. So this game's come to an abrupt end. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ross, Ross has had a massive turn. Ross, why don't you walk us through what's happened? Uh, yeah. So what I did was I had the Argus who was over on this flank. Uh, he slammed one of his arc nodes, uh, knocking it down. My intention was to slam it into his other arc node, which was here. Um, get him knocked, both knocked down. Didn't roll far enough, that's alright. Uh, Feral ended up walking up, killing one of the arc nodes. The Stalker went up, killed the knockdown one, then proceeded to kill the upright one. Uh, he had Sprint on him from the Wilder, she cast his animus onto him for him. Uh, he then sprinted away. Kaya dicked around a bit, feeded, uh, basically brought everything back for me. Um, yeah, so the feat was great for fury management. Uh, yeah, and then this Argus. How much fury did you end up having on you beforehand? I think you were sitting on like, I think like eight or feral, nine or something. One on the feral, three on the Argus here, four on this stalker. Got rid of all that, and I basically spent one fury to just give this Argus Pathfinder so he could try and slam the Slayer. He missed, needing an eight. Um, With boosted, so unfortunate. Uh, it'll happen. Um, yeah, but if that had happened, I'm. Um, we uh, sort of tried to work out whether or not the Slayer would knock down the Woolwich Siren if he did go over it, but didn't hit. So, irrelevant at this point. But yeah, I'm expecting to lose uh, the Feral, the Argus, 
someone's shifting stones, probably some damage on Stalker. So it's not going to be all. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know how much of this shit I'm going to be able to get in there because that's like a solid. That's a mm. solid distance. Like the vast majority of these guys are way out of position. So it's not. It's more the feet. I mean, you can use the feet to just say, "Hey, no, you're not doing anything this turn. Like not anything worthwhile." But it depends how you want to use it. Yeah. Anyway, sure. that's uh, yeah, it's my second turn, and I'm Jesus. Inside. All right, now we're going to turn three. I'm inside the kill box, which is inside. Always inside. Okay, big turn back for me. Um, managed to save my feet. But everything, all of the Bane Thrills were for the most part out of range, so only one of them managed to get in to the Warp Wolf. However, however, that wasn't really too much of an issue. Um, managed to roll 18 damage, 18 damage um, and completely fuck up the Warp Wolf without stay the really feet. for the most part. Yeah, without the feet uh, on his really miserable day. Um, the rest of the Bane Thrills all just kind of ran up to engage. One engaged the Stalker. Um, the Slayer managed to combo strike and f really mess up the Argi. Um, and Denny walked up and for fear of... Uh, basically it worked out that the Shifting Stones were able to teleport the Sorka about Nya sort of area. Sorry, about Nya sort of area. Um, and Denny was sitting here. So I really couldn't just sit pretty and whatnot and I wanted to have an active turn. Um, so walked up, dropped a Scourge on the Warp Wolf and manage to collateral damage, hit not only a Bane Thrall and knock a few more damage points off the Warp Wolf, but take out a Shifting Stone so he can't um, teleport and smack me for funsies. Um, so, but I'm still, I'm out in the open, I've got no focus really, the only thing that I've got to, you know, help at all is the two wreck markers in front of me and the wall, but with his ability to get Pathfinder, it could be painful and have horrible, horrible repercussions. So, we'll see how it all ends up going I'm in... I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> it's gonna go for it. Going for it! So, we'll see how it goes in circle turn three. Yeah, so, unexpected charge lanes, how are they? Ross, would you Correct. like to explain what happened in your turn? Yeah, so I'm looking at my turn on my ant cam, thinking that I can get the stalker up to where Denny is. Problem is, he's going to wear a free strike from a bane throw, and if you've ever worn a free strike from a bane throw, you know that's kind of shit. <laughs> Um, so I spent a bit of time thinking, okay, how can I get him out there without the free strike? Uh, my initial plan was to use Kaya to charge Denny, try for the crit knockdown. Um, if that didn't happen, that's alright. Um, the thing is the Stalker would have to trample over because he's just not got the clear charge lane. But anyway, uh, so Wilder walked up, did something I've never done before. I attacked him melee, the Bane Thrall, missed. <laughs> nice. uh, the second thing I've never fucking done uh, I used the shifting stones to heal <laughs> Yeah, um, healed a bit more off the stalker um, This was just like, okay, look, I'm going to wear the free strike I'll try and keep him as full as possible See what happens um, Yeah, and then Kaya charged Denny And put her into the dirt in two hits So bad, yeah. so bad I mean, I, I didn't expect to have to do it that quickly I didn't get the crit um, The crit on three dice is about Needing tens to hit is about oh, 30 odd percent, a bit less. Um, yeah, got lucky. Uh, yeah. And no, no one ever expects Kaya to kill them. It's like, Kaya, you know what? Inquisition. <laughs> I mean, she's kind of rubbish in melee, but yeah, it'll happen. So. Danny, Def 16, don't give a fuck. Yeah, tens, got them both times, and oh, see you man. later. So bad. See, I'm finding that with the circle battle box, I'm finding them having more and more respect for Kaya. At first, when I saw her, I'm like, eh, well, you know, I don't, I don't really get what you're about. I don't really kind of get what you're doing. And now when I see her being used by yourself and Tim, it can be really bad. It can be really brutal. She's she's no assassin like E. Kane or E. Striker or... Um, basically like anyone else. But I mean, at this level, there just aren't enough lanes to stop her charging and cast. I mean, speed seven with Pathfinder is pretty sweet when you go rage. Yeah. The twelve-inch threat range. Um, yeah, she surprises me a lot of the time. I, like I said, I didn't expect her to do the kill. Um, I was hoping the stalker would do it. Uh, as you can see, what I was going to do was trample the stalker up to here, and uh, buy attacks on Denny. Yep. Um, if she was knocked down, it'd be pretty guaranteed. That was the hope. But yeah, happened a bit quickly, so. Oh. Anyway, so next week will be 25 points, except you'll be able, uh, in the journeyman, you're allowed to swap out your caster. Mm. I think, are you going to swap out your caster next week? Yes. Um, I've been going down two mental trains of thought here. Yep. Uh, when you swap, you're stuck with that new caster or the battle box one, so I'll have to think about it. But I'm pretty set on Morvana, who really won't like the battle box. Um, if anyone knows Morvana, she just loves her infantry. 
doesn't really do anything at all for War Beast, but I'm just going to chuck her in with Blood Trackers, see how it happens. So that's what you'd swap out the obviously the Stalker and whatnot. Yeah. Because for... um, what happens is I have they have the same War Beast points. Yep. Uh, so I take the Blood Trackers, which are ten points, which is the same as the Stalker. Uh, I'd probably take a unit of Shifting Stones. Uh, I was thinking about the unit attachment and then a unit of Swamp Gobbers. Because the ability to place down a five inch cloud in front of your caster is brutal. Yeah, for sure. I think I'm probably going to stick with the same caster. She's pretty fucking good anyway, and although she doesn't like jacks all that much, um, I'm happy to run this list again next week. Yeah. Um, once, once the point values start upping, Denegra becomes more powerful. Yeah, just giving more attacks for her bullshit feet. <laughs> well, it's more things to debuff, more things, yeah, more attacks for your guys to benefit from. Anyways, it was a pleasure, Ross. Next week, hopefully, I'll be able to uh, pull the win, but until then, I'll have to continue losing, which we all know that John thinks I never, you know, always, always do. You do. All right.